Welcome back. Uh, this is the last talk before the uh, lunch break. Please uh, enjoy our gut part with uh, tracking ITP dependencies with Graphis. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, so, my name is Agatha. Um, I've been a Debian contributor uh, since uh, the pandemic has started. Lots of free time. So, I uh, started uh, basically in two, 2020. Um, I mostly do Python uh, packaging uh, in the Debian Python team. Uh, sometimes not Python, but really rare. And uh, this is my first time I come to a real life event uh, for Debian. And uh, I'm here uh, thanks to uh, Bursary, so thanks DPL for approving that and the uh, secretary team. Uh, yeah. So uh, one thing I've uh, noticed when doing packaging is that with Python, you have a lot of uh, dependencies, as said before in the previous talk. So um, what I did is uh, to do, because if you package one dependency, you have another dependency, another dependency, etc. It can go quite deep. So what I did, I did uh, mark them in the bug tracker. So I've used BTS block command to track um, ITP intent to package dependencies between, the, between them. The problem is, uh, this is what you get on uh, the BTS. So you cannot really see uh, the names of the package involved. You can, see all the, or you can only see numbers. So if I show you, the, you this, it's really not clear. You have to click every link uh, in blue to know what this means. Uh, yeah, actually we could do better because in the BTS we already use uh, GraphViz but not for tracking dependencies, we use GraphViz for this. So uh, this is used uh, in the BTS to track which version has some bug and which version it was fixed in. And this used GraphViz, okay, nice. And I thought, well, I could do the same for, um, for intent to package dependencies. And I did. So this is what it looks like. Um, there's a small legend on the left side uh, with some colors. Um, and this is for only one package named Python DT Chima, which depends on two things. So you can see one ITP on the left side, which is marked as done because it has been packaged, so closed in the BTS. And the other one is not an, IT, uh, not an ATP, but it's a classic bug. So there's no ITP in the beginning, but there are some dots at the end. Actually, you have to be very concise because, because uh, graphs can be huge if you put the full name of the bug. So I did some heuristics. If it's an ITP, I uh, cut down the WNPP stuff, etc. And if it's a bug, I just saw the name of the source package involved because elsewise graphs would be huge. So how did I do that? Well, spent quite a lot of time on this. Uh, if you want to do recursive things well, with SQL, it's possible, but it's quite hard. So at the beginning, you can see with the recursive, I don't know if anyone here has already used this SQL command, quite rare. And uh, yeah, Postgres people. <laughs> it exists, yeah. So it exists, but it's not recommended. You can imagine why. <laughs> and uh, it works. Um, so at the bottom, you can see the root node where you want to start. So where, where I want to start was, I want to find um, packages uh, which are in WNPP for finding ITPs with uh, me as the owner and not done because I don't want to have everything. This is the starting condition and then you have to specify a stopping condition. That's why this go in a big loop. I think I crashed um, UDD once. <coughs> So, uh, yo, so the, the request actually is a lot bigger than that. Of course, it has been abbreviated, but I think it's like 100 lines. Okay. Um, one other thing I did really quick uh, was to add the status of the package in new, because most of the time I didn't know if it was waiting or not. So for this, with Python, it really takes a few lines. Um, and also, I have used, uh, at the bottom right, you can see, that I have used um, the assignment expression, which is from very recent Python version, but makes things really concise. Otherwise, I would have to take more lines. Um, and the tracking in you is only known, of course, for uh, I, uh, ITP bugs, because for other bugs, you really 
well, don't care about new or not. And so this was for one bug, but actually I have a lot of uh, software, so I thought I could make a dashboard uh, by tracking every bug I had, and I did. So this is what it looks like. Lots of interesting things going on here. So on the left, you can see, um, I think, something a um, bit bogus, because uh, I intend to package uh, Open Tracker is in new, but the RFS is still open. Okay, so I think we, sh we should close that. In the middle, there's something interesting. Um, I've learned with that, with that graph that you can have merged bugs, but uh, in the database, they're seen as different. So you have these crossings going on, uh, but actually uh, there, are there are two ITP bugs for one package that have been merged, but I didn't merge them in the code, so there are well, crossings. Um, the last one uh, on the right side, you can see uh, the tree is going a little bit deeper, so it's getting interesting. And also for um, the red ITP, um, it's, it, it's in red uh, because it's waiting, because it's not my ITP. If it's in yellow, it's my ITP. So I know this one, I have to wait for someone else. If it's yellow, it's my job to do well, to progress, but I'm stuck uh, because of an other ITP. Also, two arrows because I guess uh, there is a dual, the dual um, blocks and blocked by um, commands you can send, and I think these bugs are uh, both blocks and blocked by, so you get two arrows. But also, this could be merged uh, as well. And uh, this is the left side on, of my dashboard. On, on the right side, I have some more. Um, basic stuff. So most of them in new, and most of them I have to do the work, really. <coughs> so <coughs> I plan to do a small live demo to show you how this works. Here we go. Um, so I run uh, this script. It will actually carry UDD, uh, not the real database. Um, yeah, we can try it. I put time before because this is an important measurement. So I run it. And what it outputs is basically um, a um, graph, viz, uh, graph commands that you can pipe you can pipe to, to a plotter next. And uh, actually it took like, um, it was quite fast, but uh, yesterday it, it was taking one second. So I was quite a bit worried that I would bring UDD down if I do this a lot. Uh, well, and uh, this is the raw output, but actually if you pipe it to uh, grab this, huh. Um, dot, yeah, dot command. Uh, this will output an SVG. And uh, the SVG file is actually uh, very interesting because in SVG you can do a lot of stuff. So I will open it in Firefox. <coughs> so here you can see what I've shown you. But um, there are more interesting stuff going on. Uh, if you put your mouse over um, the bug, you can see the full description. So this is uh, useful. Also, it, um, it can be clicked. So if I click on it, uh, it will open the BTS bug. So uh, you still have a small graph you can see, but you can access all of the information in the BTS. Um, on, on the top right, you can see nice square bits, but for, for versions. So, yep, that's it. Um, actually, you have to scroll left, right. It's not really uh, ergonomic, but uh, GraphPiz only draws uh, top, down, or left, right. So you have to make a choice. Yep. And also, uh, good. Also, yep, I wanted to show you the big SQL requests. So here I set UDD stuff, 
I have some my colors going on. Um, this is Gravbiz legend. This is a small function to go to new, and here it comes. Okay, brace yourselves. So um, we start with, with recursive. Um, we select uh, what we want, but not everything because UDD has uh, huge uh, um, lines, so you don't want to bring the um, the server down. Also, this here we put uh, true as root because it helps. Well, it's a constant, but it helps uh, in the Python code to know if it's a root node or not. So it's interesting to set. And then the condition for starting, some union, some joints. Uh, it's quite big. And then uh, distinct. Uh, distinct um, was used to uh, remove some of the duplication, but not all of them, as we have seen. So I still have to do some distinct stuff inside the... Uh, this is a huge query already. And then basically um, there are some heuristics here. So the first heuristic is um, if it's an ITP or uh, ITA uh, inside of WNPP, then uh, you want only the name of the package. You don't want WNPP, uh, ITP, etc., 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 and also uh, long text uh, because uh, I think I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah, short description is in the title of the bug, but you only want the source package. That's why it's huge. Um, for RFS uh, requests for sponsorship, we can show them dire directly. And for the rest, uh, it's considered uh, standard bugs. Not my problem uh, most of the time, so it's red. And uh, yeah. So that's it for, um, for the code. And if I go back to my presentation, Oops. Uh, yeah, uh, evolution. So the dashboard I intend to keep. Uh, it's nice. Uh, it's available on Salsa. Uh, one thing I would like to do, but I'm scared of, is to uh, show this dependency graph for each and every bug on uh, bugs.debian.org. Uh, uh, but uh, I think it's Perl, so uh, I'm not convinced. <laughs> I need to, to be careful here. Um, and also, I'm worried by the performance because um, the BTS is already quite slow, taking sometimes one or two seconds to display a bug. And I if I add a recursive query against the real um, database, I'm afraid it will bring it uh, even more down. So, <laughs> yeah, I could crash it. Ah, cache it. Yeah, actually, this is a good idea. I want uh, to implement a cache on bugs.debian.org because I think. Each query uh, makes a uh, SQL query, and it's really slow. So, could be could use some uh, caching. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, the evolution I plan to do, but uh, I need your feedback. So that's why. And finally, some resources. Um, the QR code is for the first link, uh, which is uh, the repository on Salsa with the source code. Um, the second link is a schema of the UDD database you want to look at because there's a lot of stuff going on. So the third link is a Python GrabViz library. I actually use it print in the beginning, but there is a library, so it's better. And the last one I highly recommend is a book uh, I'm reading right now, uh, Designing Data Intensive Applications. And there's a chapter inside about uh, recursive SQL queries. And it says it's not recommended, so <laughs> yeah. So thank you all, and I will take now any questions. Thank you, Agat. Are there any questions? Have you ever encountered any cycles in the dependency graph? Absolutely no, but I think it may... Well, when I created uh, the SQL query, uh, I did a recursive loop because I didn't have uh, this uh, root uh, constant, so that brings down UDT. So uh, in my request, I did some mistakes, and it would be infinitely recursive because of my error. But I have not seen bugs in the BTS with this problem. If they are, uh, I will probably bring the database down if I implement uh, this. So needs to needs to check. Do you think there's this would also make sense for regular bugs in tracking if there's a dependency chain for the bug itself? Hmm. Um, I don't know if there are cyclic bugs. They could be. Um, 
Well, the query could, uh, I think the query could not tell you it's recursive because it will recurse, so it will crash. You don't want to detect a crash to say there's something wrong, but um, I think it's another topic. But we have to be careful because if I implement this and there is a cyclic dependency, the query will crash the server, so, yeah. Any more questions? Okay, thank you again. Thank and you. We will now uh, have lunch on the first floor at Cantina, and we will uh, continue at um, 2.30, I think. So, see you soon. Enjoy lunch. <laughs>